course of a cell's lifetime, there are a few key things that take place and they happen in a certain order. And this series of events is called the cell cycle. Most of the cell cycle consists of interphase. Interphase is um, essentially while the cell is just kind of going about its normal business. So on this diagram, I'm gonna start right here. This is the beginning of interphase. This would be like starting with a brand new cell that's just getting going in life. Um, so first thing that takes place is that cell would undergo some growth. It's gonna grow larger. Um, this first part of interphase is called G1. The G stands for gap. This is considered a gap phase. Um, so there's some cell growth that takes place and then after a while the cell would go into the S phase. This is still part of interphase and during the S phase, S, S stands for synthesis. This is where DNA synthesis takes place. So all of the chromosomes would get copied during this point in time, during the S phase. And then the cell continues on um, and there's another gap phase, G2. So more cell growth takes place and then finally at this point this would be where the cell is actually ready to divide and after this line right here this is the end of interphase after this would come the division phase and that's called the mitotic phase. So uh, two things we're going to walk through the details of these mitosis which is division of the nucleus and its contents followed by cytokinesis. This is division of the cytoplasm and its contents. And once those two things are complete, what we end up with are two what are called daughter cells. We started with one parent cell and we've now ended up with two daughter cells. So let's go ahead and focus in on um, the mitotic phase. So where are we at here? Okay, the cell has already synthesized copies of all of its DNA. Now we're ready to partition that, divide it into two daughter cells. So let's take a look at the details of mitosis. During mitosis, there are some key things that take place. Mitosis always has these same steps and they always happen in the same order. So at the very beginning of mitosis, we have what's called prophase. Pro means um, before or in front of, so this is the first phase. And during prophase, there are a couple of key things that happen. For one, the nuclear envelope breaks down. And it makes sense, that has to happen. If we're gonna pull these sets of chromosomes apart into two different regions, we have to get rid of that nuclear envelope to be able to, to move things around. So the nuclear envelope breaks down and then there's another thing that's taking place. The chromosomes themselves, we say that they condense. They sort of contract up together into smaller bits. Um, and this is actually visible with a microscope. We could see this if we were to look at a dividing cell. There are also some special fibers in the cell that they're called spindle fibers. These are ultimately going to attach to the chromosomes and help to pull them to where they need to be. So those fibers start to form and those fibers are organized by something called the centrosome. This was a structure inside of the cell. You might remember from when we looked at all the organelles. Um, okay, so really key things I'd particularly like you to know is that the nuclear envelope breaks down, the chromosomes condense. In prometaphase, the process continues. Um, so those, those spindle fibers that we mentioned before, those spindle fibers are going to reach out and attach to the chromosomes. They're going to attach right at, there's sort of like a handle near the middle of the chromosome that's been duplicated, and that's where the mitotic spindle is going to attach. We can see the spindle forming down here in this picture. This picture has the DNA stained in blue, and then the microtubules of the mitotic spindle, they are stained in green. So you can kind of see actually that the spindle fibers are reaching out kind of towards the center and starting to make connections with the DNA. In metaphase, the M, think middle. In metaphase, what happens is all of the chromosomes line up at the middle of the cell. So you can see them in a schematic. The chromosomes are in red and they're all lined up at the middle and it's the spindle fibers that have helped to, to push them there. Next step is anaphase. During anaphase, 
the duplicated chromosomes get separated. So remember, each duplicated chromosome consists of two sister chromatids, and what's gonna happen during anaphase is those sister chromatids get pulled apart from each other. So you can see, again, in the schematic here, um, one sister chromatid heads to the left, the other one heads to the right, and it's the mitotic spindle that's pulling them apart from each other. Finally, telophase, this is the last stage of mitosis, the last step in dividing the nucleus and its contents. During telophase, the chromosomes essentially make it to two different regions, and each set gets a new nuclear envelope formed around it. So the nuclear envelope starts to form around the chromosomes, and then at this point we don't need that mitotic spindle anymore, so it starts to break down. After mitosis is complete, which, by the way, just recapping, mitosis includes prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Okay, that's the end of mitosis. Next up comes cytokinesis, and this is division of the cell's um, cytoplasm, so the rest of the cell needs to divide as well. And for this I'm just going to jump on to the next slide. I've got a couple more details here. Cytokinesis looks a little bit different in animal cells versus plant cells. In the case of animal cells, the way that this happens, uh, so here, here in purple, this is the new nucleus that's just formed. Here's the other new nucleus that's just formed. And what happens in animal cells is that the plasma membrane just starts to pinch inwards. We say that it forms a cleavage furrow. And there's a ring of filaments that, that contracts around the middle here, and it ends up pinching the cell in two. So that's cytokinesis in animal cells. Plant cells are a little bit different. Plant cells, remember, they have a cell wall to deal with. So for a plant cell, what would happen is a new cell wall would be formed right down the middle, and that's possible through the use of vesicles. Vesicles would meet up in the middle and fuse together in order to build that new cell wall. It's called a cell plate, um, but once it's mature, it ends up becoming new cell wall. 